Le'Veon Bell is as unique an offensive weapon as we've ever seen. A patient runner with hands like a receiver, in his prime he was simply unguardable. As one-third of the killer bees in Pittsburgh, we witnessed him become a superstar. But when he left the Steel City, things went south quickly. Here is the rise and fall of Le'Veon Bell. For a guy that became an NFL star and fan favorite, you'd be shocked at just how overlooked Le'Veon Bell was in high school. Born and raised in Reynoldsburg, Ohio, with two older brothers who played football, sports were Le'Veon's life. At Madison Grove Port High School, he ran track, played basketball, and was a star on the football field. But he wasn't getting the attention he deserved. Despite dominating since he was a sophomore, ESPN ranked him outside the top 200 running backs in the nation and gave him just a two-star rating. With offers from just Bowling Green, Marshall, and Eastern Michigan, Le'Veon spent days online comparing himself to other players. With signing day approaching, it would take a Spartans player getting in trouble to open up a scholarship, but Michigan State came calling. They took a risk, and Bell showed them that the amount of stars next to your name don't define you. Le'Veon made an immediate impact as a key part of the Spartans' rushing attack. In his debut game, he stampeded over Western Michigan for 141 yards and two touchdowns. In a big game against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, his 114 yards and touchdown came in clutch for a huge victory. The same recruiting platforms that refused to acknowledge his ability named him to the all-freshman team. He did much of the same in his sophomore season, besting all of his freshman year numbers. But in his junior year, he put Michigan State back on the map. As the heart of the Spartans' offense, he rushed for 1,793 yards and scored 13 times. Feeling like he had nothing more to prove in college, Le'Veon decided to skip his senior year and enter the NFL draft. Despite his success at MSU, pundits and personnel underrated Bell again, ranking him the fourth or fifth best running back in the draft class. Most boxed him in as a big, bruising power back. They had no idea what he was capable of. Well, Mike Tomlin did. Tomlin made Le'Veon the second back taken in the 2013 NFL Draft. With the 48th overall pick, he was a Pittsburgh Steeler. And, like Deja Vu, Bell's impact was immediate. In his black and yellow debut, Bell found paydirt twice against the Vikings. He also showed off an ability that he never got the chance to in college, catching the ball. What would become one of his calling cards, Le'Veon caught four passes in his first game as a Steeler. Over the next month, the rookie became Pittsburgh's feature back. His emergence helped surge the Steelers from an 0-4 start to finish the season 8-8. Le'Veon became Big Ben's best friend. Not only when he handed the ball off, as Bell ran for 860 yards in just 13 games, but as an outlet whenever receivers were blanketed, where he surprisingly caught 45 passes as a rookie. His 1,259 total yards broke Steelers legend Franco Harris's rookie record. The Steelers were ticking upwards, but Bell was just getting started. In the 2014 season, Le'Veon Bell shed 20 pounds. Now, at just 225 pounds, Bell was more agile, explosive, durable, and ready to put the world on notice. In the opening game of his sophomore season, Le'Veon destroyed the Browns. He ran for 109 yards and a score while tacking on 88 yards receiving. Not only had Bell's athleticism changed, so had his running style. Most runners are taught to be quick and decisive, hit the hole and get as much as you can. Bell ran differently, and his unconventional style became his patented move. Bell would wait, pace, and sidestep, patiently as the Steelers' offensive line broke open a hole. When Le'Veon saw the slightest light of an opening, he exploded through it. This unorthodox style pounded opponents into submission. Bell started 2014 with seven straight games with 100 scrimmage yards. The Steelers' dominating offense was hitting its stride as November rolled around, and so was Bell. Bell would find his first 200-yard rushing game in a Week 11 matchup with the Titans. Then, a week later against the Saints, Bell had 159 yards receiving and another 95 on the ground along with a rushing TD. The division rival Bengals couldn't stop anything, let alone the dynamic Bell. He ran for 185 yards as well as 50 yards through the air and scored three times, drowning out any hopes of the playoffs for the Bengals. This three-week streak would put Le'Veon Bell next to one of the greatest to ever play, tying Walter Payton's three consecutive 200-yard games record. But in the final week of the season, against the Bengals again, Bell's all-pro season came to an end on one play. 
Safety Reggie Nelson caught Bell on a tackle the wrong way, hyperextending his knee. Bell would miss the playoffs, as the Steelers went on to lose to the Baltimore Ravens in the wildcard round. In a year, he went from rookie to the best all-round back in football. He set a career high in rushing and receiving yards. 1,361 yards and 8 touchdowns on the ground is impressive. But add to that the fact that Bell had better receiving numbers than most teams' number one wideout, Le'Veon finished with more catches than Rob Gronkowski and Keenan Allen with 83 receptions for 854 yards and scored three times through the air. At the height of his career, there were cracks blemishes that showed what Bell's future would look like. Right after his legendary season, he was pulled over and charged with having over 20 grams of marijuana while hanging out with LeGarrette Blunt and his girlfriend. He was sentenced to 15 months of probation and was suspended for two games to start the 2015 season. When he returned to action, he was dominant yet again, racking up 692 total yards in just six games. But in a Week 8 matchup against the Bengals, he tore his MCL, ending his season. Before he returned to the field the next season, he found himself in trouble again. After being put on Goodell's list for the first substance abuse, Bell was suspended after breaking it again. In a contract year, now missing the first three games of the season, the pressure was on Bell to perform. Boy, did he. Bell put together the best season of his career. He would run for 100 yards one week, then catch 10 passes the next, or sometimes do both in the same game. Against the Bills, he put his name in the Steelers' record books, breaking their franchise single-game rushing record with 236 yards. Bell had 100 yards in 11 of the 12 games he played in. He scored nine times, had 1,268 rushing yards, along with 75 receptions for 616 yards. He was the gold standard of running back play, and that couldn't be doubted after his first two playoff games. Bell broke the Steelers' playoff rushing record in his debut, running through the Miami Dolphins to the tune of 167 yards. The record stood just one week, when Bell shattered it by bolting for 170 yards over the Kansas City Chiefs in the divisional round. Bell became the first player to run for 150-plus yards in his first two playoff games, establishing the all-time record at 337 yards. Remember that contract year? Well, Bell was going to stay a Steeler, just not the way he wanted, as the team franchise tagged him. In rebellion, he held out the Steelers' offseason and preseason. He wanted to be paid as both a star running back and receiver. When he returned for the 2017 season, he was still the same Le'Veon Bell. Another 2,000 yards from scrimmage, and the Steelers' offense was prolific. Bell was selected as a first-team All-Pro for the second time, cementing his case as the best running back in football. Another 1,300 yards on the ground and another 85 receptions he felt he deserved a monster contract. The Steelers came with just that. They offered a five-year, $70 million contract that would have made him the highest-paid running back in the league at the time. Bell was hoping to land a contract that paid out $15 million per year, and he didn't like the guaranteed number, so he declined. Pittsburgh franchise-tagged him again. Le'Veon Bell responded with another holdout. He said he would sit out the entire year if he had to, something never done before. And he kept his word. He didn't play a single snap in 2018 after the two sides couldn't come to terms on a deal. It made him a villain to Pittsburgh, played a part in imploding the Steelers' locker room from inside out, and changed Le'Veon's legacy forever. After the 2018 season, he was a free agent, free to seek out any deal he wanted. Just a year removed from being the league's premier back, his market was cold. He signed with the New York Jets for four years and $52.5 million, with $35 million guaranteed. To end their saga, neither Bell nor Pittsburgh won. He lost money, and they lost a talented back. His time as part of Gang Green turned blue quickly. The Jets' new head coach, Adam Gase, didn't want Bell in the first place. Then, Le'Veon's style as the great hesitator worked great behind a dominant Pittsburgh line, but not so much behind New York's patchwork front. His overly patient style led to too many tackles for loss. In less than a season with the Jets, Bell was already complaining about play calling and playing back at his 240 weight again. In his first season with the Jets, he was held to a putrid 3.2 yards per carry. It didn't help when he missed a game against the Dolphins for sickness, only to be photographed bowling the night before the game. 
In the offseason, the Jets signed and drafted other backs, which isn't good when you have the most expensive one on your roster already. To start the 2020 season, Gase sat Le'Veon out of practice for strained hamstrings, only for him to say he wasn't hurt. Just a week later, Bell was on IR with a strained hamstring. When he did finally return, the Jets were trounced by the Cardinals. Le'Veon would take to Twitter, liking tweets about his lack of usage and other tweets saying the Jets should trade him. Well, they did try to trade him. Problem is, nobody wanted him. The Jets decided it would be best to just eat the $27 million they owed Le'Veon and release him. Just four days on the free market, and the Super Bowl contending Kansas City Chiefs scooped him up. Eventually, you are the common denominator when everywhere you go you're in a situation. Despite being on the team that would play in back-to-back -back Super Bowls, something that Le'Veon said was his number one priority, he would be found complaining after the season. Bell played sparingly for the high-powered Chiefs as a third stringer. After the season, he made a remark that pissed people off. I'd never play for Andy Reid again. I'd rather retire. Strange thing to say about a coach who is regarded as one of the greatest ever. We'd love to include Le'Veon's recent Ravens run, but it was nothing more than a blip. He was let go after five games and a 2.7 per carry average. Bell has now signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, after they place Leonard Fournette on IR, likely to just be a depth piece in a banged-up running back room. I guess the question we will never know the answer to is, was Le'Veon right? He stunted his career trajectory, but did get more guaranteed money with the Jets. No matter whose side you take, Le'Veon Bell did set the standard for modern-day running back play. He is a major reason why it is essentially a requirement that running backs come into the league with the ability to catch just as well as they can run. A true pioneer to the game.